Hi, my name is Johan Falk. This is the first of a number of videos where I want to talk about something called Skill Compass, a set of modules used for building sites for learning stuff. Uh, I'm using an example called skillcompass.org. This is a clone of that site. And this is one example of what you can do with the Skill Compass modules. Uh, this is a site for learning Drupal, but I uh, actually started these modules because I wanted to build a site for learning mathematics and physics. So this is just one example. In this first video I want to give you some just overview of the ideas of Skill Compass and also show you some of the, well, very quickly, some of the cool stuff in, in Skill Compass which is pretty tricky to create yourself. Uh, so here we go. Uh, you, want, you might want to learn uh, use Skill Compass if you have a large topic that you want to teach others or you're, you're a number of um, people who want to uh, help and join forces in, in uh, teaching something like Drupal or mathematics or physics or whatnot. It could be also knitting or uh, painting or whatever. Um, and you take that subject and you divide it into topics and subtopics uh, like this. You have Drupal and then subtopics like site building which can be uh, divided into intermediate site building and you have like more and more subtopics here. Uh, and these you can organize these using the skill compass. Each of these topics can have any number of I, what I call learning resources, which you then gather and add to the site. Right now, I have basically two types of learning resources: there are external learning resources, which link to other pages on the web, or you have resource collections, uh, which you can use to browse. Uh, well, and collect a number of resources in a specific order, which can be kind of useful. Um, and the big idea of this is that you uh, will be able to help people uh, to, to learn stuff. Th this kind of map here will help you get started in learning. If you want to learn Drupal, pretty often the, the biggest question is where to start and what you should learn. And just this map here will help you to understand that there are several different parts of this and you might want to start somewhere. These are organized by inclusion, like the topics and then subtopics, including in the larger topic. It's also possible to arrange them on uh, dependencies. Uh, this is kind of tricky, but then it means that if you start somewhere and you learn the uh, content management in Drupal, you can then move on and learn like fields, and then you can learn like the reference module and, and things. So you can organize uh, things in different ways here. Um, yeah, that's the basic idea of uh, Skill Compass. Organize learning content uh, on, on a site uh, by, by dividing it up into subtopics and things. Um, some of the cool stuff that is uh, kind of difficult to create, starting with caching. Uh, this uh, site is set up to, to cache everything even for logged in users and there are rules and things for clear and cache when you change things. That's kind of useful uh, if you have a lot of traffic. Um, one of the uh, difficult things, uh, if you are a lot of people uh, cooperating on doing things like this, uh, you might not agree on how the topics and subtopics are organized. And I've uh, solve this or I'm, I'm using a model on voting on relations uh, between topics so you have here this is a topic called the reference module references module even it says that this is a subtop well it has a subtopic using references with views it, it's a part of it's a subtopic to the relations between entities topic and it says that this requires that you first learn fields and basic site building and oh, you get the idea. And these arrows here are here because you can vote up and down on these, uh, uh, these connections between topics. So people can add their own subtopics and things and then you can vote to see where into this tree they fit. Uh, and that's kind of useful. I'm not going to go into technical details now, that'll, that's for another uh, video later on. Um, the resource collections I talked about, let's see if I go into content and see if I can find an example I made here. Uh, resource collection, here it is. That's a way to uh, gather up a number of resources uh, uh, so you can have them in, in a particular order. So these are all individual uh, resources on the site, but uh, if you have collected them into a resource collection, 
you can browse them uh, in order. So here's you're browsing now Learn Drupal 7. You can go back one step uh, and then you come to another resource here and back one step. Obviously you might want to have some other types of resources on your own site uh, like having a big text here or images and, and videos and whatnot. Like I only have links to another site. Here's also preview so you can see see what happens here. Yeah. The, the site and well, the page that this links to but you can set up any kind of resource that you like of course the, these are nodes in Drupal and you hopefully know how to change those or set up your own content types um, yes uh, something that I also think is uh, kind of useful but actually not very difficult to make work is this uh, map thing here the, the graph clickable graph this is all done by a module called the JIT which is uh, actually a jQuery library and I don't know how it works even but it works and I'm happy so that, that's fine the JIT uh, J-I-T that's the module name um, yeah there are some other things here that are interesting it's, it's possible for example to link to Drupal uh, let's see if we can find this take rules here for example and then take a uh, um, a learning resource. There are links, well, uh, not links actually to the Drupal.org projects, but these are marked up with some microdata things. So, uh, robots uh, scanning this page understands that this is something called rules 7.x, 2.x, uh, which can be kind of useful. This is done uh, thanks to a girl called Lynn Clark that has made this possible, some kind of project. If I type views, for example, I'll get a list of projects on Drupal.org containing the word views which is very useful so you can like refer to specific Drupal.org projects that's useful on this site if you have a site by, about knitting then it's probably not that useful and some other interesting things let's see if we let's go to rules here I've added some cool stuff just today using a tool called Yahoo query language so if you browse a topic here called rules we have some uh, quite a bit of uh, learning resources on this site but I have also now added the top Google results for uh, learn Drupal rules and here are like some some good resources according to, to Google which might be useful if you haven't got that many resources on the topic added to, to your site yet um, I have something similar up here uh, pulling information or data from Twitter so you can uh, tweet and uh, tweets will show up on the page. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I'm using the node ID to make the, the hashtag page specific like this and that's kind of kind of useful I think. Um, yeah, if you have ideas, suggestions, comments, uh, complaints, uh, head over to drupal.org slash project slash SC skill compass and uh, add issues and, and things and I'll be happy to, to uh, look at it and cooperate. I, I want to work with other people on this. If, if you want to join, please, please do. Um, yeah, that's it. And the following uh, videos, I'm going to show you how you can use the skillcompass.org site, how I set that up, so well, how you can actually use it. And then later on, I'm going to record videos on uh, how I made the uh, Skill Compass modules work how they're set up and configured. And yeah, see you around. Bye.